in our chemistry. Um, today we're going to wrap up <coughs> this chapter um, talking about exceptions to the octet rule. So just as a reminder, the octet rule, um, the whole purpose of the exercise for creating um, covalently bound molecules was so that everybody had a full valence shell. Um, so everybody well, mostly everybody was touching eight electrons. That was the octet rule. Um, the exception being hydrogen, who was okay with the duet, which is two. Now we're going to look at um, exceptions to this octet rule, where that kind of breaks down, where uh, they're happy with touching something other than eight electrons. There's going to be three exceptions to the rule that I'm going to tell you about, I at least have to introduce. Um, there's really only going to be one that we talk about at length. Um, but I have to introduce these other ones to you, so I will. So odd electron species. I mentioned back in another um, video, if you ever add the number of valence electrons and it's an odd number, the red flag should start to fly. Um, everything that we talk about are bonding pairs, lone pairs, bonding pair. Um, so having an odd number leaves an electron by itself. It happens. It exists, it's not um, common, but when there is an odd number of valence electrons, we call that a free radical. Likely you've heard this from a bi biological standpoint, um, so we eat antioxidants um, in order to kind of negate those free radicals. So as you would imagine, um, an electron being by itself not paired up um, is pretty unstable. Um, so he does break down um, things biologically in order to kind of stabilize himself. Um, so if antioxidants are present, present um, in our diet and our bodies, those can go to fighting these free radicals. Um, another example of an exception to the rule is an incomplete octet. Um, so here's where we see those exceptions that are right around helium again. Um, so things like boron and lithium and hydrogen um, are all okay with incomplete octets. The only incomplete octet that we really test on is um, hydrogens, but know that there are other atoms that are okay with just six um, electrons or just four or just two electrons. Um, so those do exist. They the one that we're going to talk about at length is something called an expanded octet. Um, so kind of the inverse of the incomplete and expanded octet is where um, atoms can take on more than eight electrons. They can touch more than eight electrons. For the expanded octets, um, this is only going to happen in a certain um, group of elements. So I have to be very um, careful how I explain this. So if you have a periodic table, now would be a great time to take a look at that. So expanded octets are only going to happen in the third energy level or a higher energy level. So the third energy or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh. If you're looking at the periodic table, the third energy level, um, Remember, starts on sodium, so that's the third period there. And higher energy levels would be located below sodium on the periodic table. So potassium is the fourth energy level, rubidium is the fifth, so on and so forth. So anything in the third energy level or a higher energy level can have an expanded octet. So what's magical about the third energy level? Why is that the, the breaking point? Well, what becomes available in the third energy level? Yeah, the D block becomes available. So remember we can do crazy, silly things with that D block. Um, so this is one of those things that they can do. Um, with that D block being available, we can sometimes shove some extra electrons um, into that D block if there's nothing there. Um, and that allows us the freedom to have these expanded octets. Two more rules that I want to talk about before we look at um, the structures. So number one, third energy level or higher. Number two, the only um, element that will have an expanded octet for our case 
is going to be the central atom. So if we look at these two examples down here at the bottom, uh, we would not find expanded octets on any of these fluorines. The only one that could have expanded octets is going to be the element that's right in the middle, that central element. So that's rule number two. And then rule number three um, is we can't expand this until eternity. Um, there's really two options. So the expanded octet options are either 10 electrons, like touching 10 electrons, or touching 12 electrons. Those are the only two scenarios. Um, so we see this guy right here has two, four, six, eight, ten. This guy right here has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and those are our only two options. We wouldn't see anything more than that. So with these expanded octets, now we've got some new geometries to consider. Um, so that's what we're gonna finish this slideshow with. So if we have um, five electron groups attached to the central atom, we're gonna have something that's called um, trigonal by pyramidal, okay? So the trigonal, we've got these three atoms that are kind of in the same plane, um, and they're gonna form a triangle. So um, you can think of those as kind of the base um, of these pyramids. And then by pyramidal, um, so we have a pyramid, if we talk about the atom at the top, and then we have a pyramid, a second pyramid, if we talk about the atom that's pointing down. Um, so that by pyramidal, we kind of have two pyramids, both with that triangle. Um, we also have some other terminology here, um, just so we can talk about where lone pairs go. Um, so we've got equatorial and axial atoms here. So our axial atoms are going to be the ones that are pointing straight up or straight down. You can think of them as kind of north-south here. Those are going to be our axials. So think about, you know, like Earth spins on an axis. Same kind of idea here. And then our equatorial are going to be the atoms that are on the equator of this molecule. Um, so these three chlorines that are all in the same plane, kind of right in the center of that um, molecule. Those are our equatorial. The reason that we uh, dictate axial and equatorial is because um, lone pairs are only going to have one option. Um, and so in the trigonal by pyramidal or the five electron groups, if we have lone pairs, they're gonna go equatorial. So the bond angle and the equator is a little bit longer. So that's 120 degrees. So remember our um, lone pairs are fat. They take up more space. So they're gonna be um, on the equator where there is in fact more space. So if we have one lone pair um, on the central atom, that lone pair is going to go here on the equator. Um, and now we start to get some really cool geometric, uh, ge or excuse me, molecular geometries. So if we have that lone pair on the equator, of course the um, electron geometry is still trigonal by pyramidal. Now we've got the molecular geometry as a seesaw, so if you kind of turn this on its side, it looks like an old school seesaw. We could add another lone pair on that central atom. Um, so now we've got our electron geometry is still trigonal by pyramidal. Um, but now if we look at the molecular geometry, we see a T shape. Um, so that's our second molecular geometry. And I don't think it's depicted in this slide, but if I were to add a third um, lone pair, it would go again on this third position in the equator. Um, so we'd have lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, um, and then what we would be left with is a linear molecule, so that's the last option. All right, so the other option is a six electron group species. Um, the six electron group species is called octahedral. Um, so what we have here is, um, again, kind of a square base in the middle, so we've got a square here. Um, and then we've got one pyramid going up to the top, one pyramid coming down to the bottom. So kind of a square base pyramid, same kind of idea. Um, just a fun fact, this is called octahedral um, because there are eight faces 
to this um, particular geometry. So that's where you get the object control. We still have um, equatorial and axial atoms. So um, the square is our equatorial right on the equator. And we still have one, two fluorines that are axial. I say that because for six electron group species, the lone pairs are going to go axial. So here, um, we could have one lone pair going up um, and then still have the base of this pyramid and something down here. Um, that would be an option. Or here, we jump straight to two lone pairs. Um, and if we have two lone pairs in the axial positions, of course, electron geometry is octahedral. Um, molecular geometry, in this case, though, is kind of a fun one. It's square planar. Um, so it's flat and it makes a square if we connect the dots here. So I alluded to this before, um, but this is actually the second half, or this is the first half of that um, geometry table. I alluded to this, that there is in fact a second half. It doesn't fit on one slide, that's why I broke it up. Um, but this is the second half of that table. Again, this is available to you um, on the um, exam cover sheet. Um, so again, I highly recommend that you have this near you as you're working through homework, taking quizzes, taking tests, um, just because it'd be easier to refer back to this. That's the end of chapter four. I hope you guys found this helpful.